diseases that are becoming epidemic. And I think it's so important that we start with these most intimate exposures, which is the products that we're putting on our bodies, on our faces, and our hair on a daily basis. Um, it's just common sense that we phase carcinogens and hazardous chemicals out of those products. And I'm really happy also to get a chance to talk to John Bailey today. Um, and John, when you were at in charge of the FDA Office of Cosmetics in the 80s, you know, you said that um, when products are on the market, consumers just assume that they can't hurt you, and that's not always the case. And you said repeatedly that claims like hypoallergenic and natural mean absolutely nothing, and that it's up to consumers to figure out, you know, what what's the, whether the companies what the companies is telling them is true and I just think that um, consumers shouldn't have to do so much work to figure out what's in these products that we're putting on our bodies you know we shouldn't have to do a research project or have a PhD in chemistry to figure out what these chemicals are and what they do to us um, I believe that it should be the responsibility of the companies to use their capacity for innovation um, to figure out how to phase out the carcinogens and make safe non-toxic products. John Bailey, uh, your response. Uh, you are now the chief scientist of the Personal Care Products Council. For 30 years, you were a scientist at the FDA in charge of the very division, is that right, that would regulate the, associate, the businesses that you now represent? Well, thank you very much, Amy, for the opportunity to uh, to talk with you and uh, Stacy today. You know, I think the the cosmetic industry record uh, speaks for itself. Uh, for decades, uh, we've sold safe products under the existing law, uh, and that the the products on the market are the safest that consumers will use every day. And certainly, we believe that uh, today is a is a time to introduce uh, a new legislation to to bring it. Uh, to make it contemporary with what consumers expect, uh, and that's what we proposed earlier in the week. And in fact, we've been working with Congress for uh, three years to come up with appropriate legislation. Uh, that said, I, I think that the notion that cosmetics are laced with toxins and that consumers are put at risk is really not uh, consistent with, uh, with what really happens in the marketplace. The products are safe. Uh, uh, cosmetic companies take great steps to avoid and minimize exposures to substances, and, and the, the products that are sold here in the U.S. are very much in line with, with those sold in the rest of the world that are also safe. So, you know, I think it's really, uh, really a misrepresentation that consumer health is being put at risk uh, uh, by products on the market, and, and I, I think this legislation that we've uh, put on the table will help to address uh, any concerns to, to address consumer interest in transparency and give FDA uh, more authority uh, over products uh, in, in the marketplace. Where does the legislation that uh, you have introduced, uh, the Personal Care Products Council and Jan Schakowsky's legislation, differ? Well, I think there, there are many common elements. We believe, in fact, that uh, companies should register their products and should register their ingredients, that they should uh, report serious adverse reactions to, uh, to the agency, and that they should follow good manufacturing practice. And, and that has been in our, our proposal uh, for, for a long time. And we also believe that the agency, using sound science and good scientific practices, uh, should assess uh, some of the contaminants, some of the ingredients that have been of concern, and should issue uh, guidance based on, on that science. And in addition, we believe that the, the, uh, uh, the law should recognize the considerable investment that the industry has put in over the years through the Cosmetic Ingredient Review Program, which is an independent program of, of scientific experts that have been assessing cosmetic ingredients for more than 30 years. And we believe a more formal re uh, relationship uh, uh, should be uh, formed with that. Where I think we differ is that uh, F FDA uh, cannot, it's simply not something they're able to do, uh, assess all of these ingredients uh, and make a determination of safe, unsafe. That's really best done by the Cosmetic Ingredient Review. Uh, the idea of, of classification of ingredients as safe or unsafe um, is, 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 is not a simple process. It really has to take into account the ingredient, how it's used, how it's controlled, and so forth. So, so I think that, that the, what, what we know about the Shedkowski bill, and frankly, we haven't seen it yet, 
uh, it goes far beyond what's really necessary. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. John Bailey, Personal Care Products Council, he's the chief scientist.